Hi there, Grade 11s, and welcome to our Term 2 modules in your Grade 11 CAT curriculum. Now, the first one we're looking at is dealing with memory, processing, and storage. Now, we know about these things from our information processing cycle, but we're going to go into some more detail on, you know, the difference between memory and storage, online storage, backing up, and some basic troubleshooting and processing. This is going to be a common theme coming through now and into next year. So please expect this in your upcoming tests and exams. Right, so let's talk about memory and storage. So memory, what is memory? Well, memory holds the data and instructions that the computer is using while it is on and working. Okay, so that's the first thing we need to know. Now, what's the difference between that and storage? Remember, sorry, remember <laughs> that memory needs power to keep its contents. That's why we always talk about memory as um, it being volatile, which means when the PC is switched off, everything that's in RAM gets wiped out. Okay. Um, storage is different in the sense that it holds programs and data far more permanently. Now, remember what I keep saying. Permanency in the computer area simply means that when I switch the PC off, those files and folders are not going to disappear. All right. And there they tell us at the bottom, it keeps the contents even when the computer is switched off. Therefore, it is non-volatile. Okay. So that's the first distinction between memory and storage. Now we see that memory is also electronic. Right. Our storage can be electronic. It can be magnetic like our old hard drives or traditional hard drives. It can be optical like our CDs and DVDs. Or like I said, electronic and that we're talking more about our flash drives and SSDs. Um, our memory is also fast to access. Now, when they tell us that storage is slow because it works mechanically, we're talking more on the traditional hard drives than on the newer, um, let's say, SSD drives that we have now okay so it's important to know these two and to be able to differentiate between the two to be able to tell me well give me two points um, on each side memory and storage showing me the difference between the two which means that i have to list something on the side of memory and then put a point on the other side when it comes to storage showing how it's different okay so memory is electronic Storage can be magnetic, optical, and electronic. Memory is fast to access. Storage is slower, right? Um, you can say why it is slower. The one needs power to keep its contents. The other one does not. One, you know, so that's, that's, that's sort of what you need to do there. Okay, now this is important because we generally deal with different ads that start coming up now like these. And there we can see highlighted the memory of these ads okay we're looking remember we, we're looking now at memory and storage so this is where the advert refers to ram that is indicating our memory okay when it comes to terms such as hdd our hard disk drive or ssd um, or the dvd writer this refers to storage so here we can see this particular one has a 256 gig ssd so it's a solid state drive Whereas this one has a one terabyte hard disk drive. So this is the older, more traditional hard drive with a disk inside. This is the one that has no moving parts inside, right? Just so you know the difference. Why is it important? Because you will be asked questions in terms of the difference between the two. And you need to be able to tell us that SSDs are much faster at transferring data than your traditional hard drive. A computer with a SSD will perform much faster than the same computer with a hard drive. So this is why you find that most modern laptops, even your phone, has these SSDs in them, right? Um, and this makes them a lot faster when it comes to dealing with that. Okay, let me go into some more detail on these various things. So this is our, when we talk about a hard disk drive, we're talking about a traditional hard drive. That is what our traditional hard drive looks like. With the disks, you can see there's multiple disks inside. There's an arm that's reading off of that. It is non-volatile, which means that the information will be kept there even when the power is off. It's a magnetic storage device. 
the internal hard drives plugged directly into the motherboard. It has n uh, moving parts as opposed to what we'll talk about now, the SSD. And it needs to be fragmented from time to time. Whereas our solid state drives, and we have different ones, um, here we can see that we have uh, what, what would we what we would consider a normal SSD. This is your M.2 drive that we have here, and here's an example of an external as well. So these all fall under SSDs. They are non-volatile, same. They are electronic now, right, instead of magnetic. Um, the internal SSDs plug into the motherboard. Now, with that, when they're talking about that, they're specifically referring to the M.2 and I've got a video on that, I think one of my shorts, I actually show you how it plugs into the motherboard. There are no moving parts, it's faster um, in terms of transferring data, in terms of working, and it uses less power than the HDDs. Now, please remember, we don't just say the SSD is faster, you need to say why it is faster, what it is faster at doing than the hard disk drive. Then we have online storage, and this we know, Online storage is just disk space that is allocated to you on a server on the internet. So that server sitting somewhere else and you have been given space on that server um, on things like Dropbox, Google Drive, and OneDrive. And we know when we look at how online storage works, you are all the different users and they are saving information to a server that's sitting somewhere, um, could be somewhere else in the world, somewhere else in your country, but you are accessing it through the internet so you must be able to describe explain what online storage is and give an example now again i'm going to say this to you if you have examples that don't line up with what we have if there's something newer that does work as online storage you can give us that example um, we'll just have to go and check if we are not familiar with that All right so with the advantages and disadvantages again you folks know i always say you need to know at least two of these. So do go through that. Obviously, the advantage is I can access it from anywhere. I'm saving space on my PC because I'm not um, saving anything there. I don't manage the backups. I don't manage the security. It's all beautiful. But the biggest disadvantage is I can only access it where I have an internet connection. Some files, especially large ones, might be slow or might not be usable at all because of a slow connection. So those are things you just need to take into account when it comes to that. And like I say, if you know two of each, you should be good to go. All right. Then we look at the difference between online storage and cloud computing. Now, you see immediately the difference in term. Online storage, we are storing files online on a server somewhere else. We know that. So then what is cloud computing? And here they tell us online storage differs from cloud computing in that it only involves storing files online. But cloud computing means that the actual programs run on a server on the internet and you access those programs through your web browser. So you are accessing those that program and that program is being run on a server somewhere else. Okay, it's not on your PC, which means you don't use any processing power. You are literally just opening up your web browser and you are running the program from there. Okay, so just know the difference between those two. Then we talk a bit about backing up and what is backing up? Most of you know what backing up is, what archiving is as well. So backing up, when we refer to that, we are creating a copy of the data or information and we're placing it in a different location. So here we can see our gentleman is busy creating a copy of his data to store that somewhere else. And we have this cloud here in the background because he could be storing um, his information, you know, backing it up to cloud storage, right? Some sort of online storage. Why do we back up? We must be able to explain this. We do this in case the original files or folders are lost and damaged. And you know how you feel when anything happens to your phone and you lose your photos and all these different things. All right. So when it comes to backing up, a backup must be easy to restore. And you must have quick, it must be able to be done in a quick and easy way. All right. If you're going to be backing up something and it's going to take hours to do it or days, I mean, nobody's really going to bother backing up, all right? 
Um, I know when you do the backup for, for your WhatsApp messages, um, it can take a little while depending on how much you've actually got. And you can specify what you want to backup as well. Okay, so there are a number of popular backup strategies. And obviously, we can use online backup services. So like Dropbox, for example, we can use external portable drives, we can use flash drives, it's all going to depend on the context. All right, let's just quickly look at the difference between backups and archiving. Now, most of you know archiving because you archive people's chats in WhatsApp. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to go into why you do that. Uh, maybe there's chats you don't want someone to see. I don't know. But archiving is where we are taking that chat and we are moving it somewhere else in order to use it later. So there we see under archiving, storing files that are not meant to be accessed regularly, but kept as a reference. So we take it and we move it completely somewhere else. Whereas a backup is where I'm making a copy of those files. I'm still going to store it somewhere else, but the original files are with me. A copy is somewhere else. So backups are essential, but archiving is not essential. Okay, so we just need to know the difference between them. And then we go to some basic troubleshooting as we round off this module. Uh, managing backups, many people use um, on the PCs, especially where servers and networks are concerned. They use specialist uh, backup software. This compresses the data. It compares the backup with the storage, all this type of thing. Now, if you are backing up, for example, to things like CDs and DVDs, um, you can have problems because the CD or DVD is not clean. Maybe the writer, there might be an, there might be an issue with that. Um, backing up to CDs and DVDs is not practical because of how long it takes and the fact that CDs only hold about 740 megs and your DVDs somewhere in the region of 4 to 8 gigs. Um, most of us have a lot more info than that, even on our phones. Okay, So we're not going to be backing up to that. Then things like formatting and reformatting. Now, when we talk about formatting, this is preparing a disk to store data. And most disks are pre-formatted. That's why you can take a flash drive or an external hard drive and just plug it in and you're able to work on it. Now and then, you might need to reformat it. In other words, you've got data and things on there, but you just want to completely clean that drive, take it back to what it was like originally, wiping everything off of it. And this is where you reformat a disk. And then we have, and this is an important one, this one and the, the next one I'm going to show you, disk scanning. These are some of our system software utilities, right? That utility software that we keep talking about, disk scanning is one of those. What does it do? Well, it fixes issues on your hard drives. Um, it runs the scanner, it checks for errors and bad sectors, and then does what it can to actually repair that. And then the last one, the one that always comes up in tests and exams is disk defragmentation. So we need to understand that the more computers use, the more the files get scattered on the disk, parts of the files, things, especially when you delete and you copy and all of this type of thing. This is a utility. This is utility software again. And what this does is it puts the parts of the files back together again and ends up speeding up your computer. And there you can see what it looks like, it's there to optimize your drive. All right, last section is our processing. So when we talk about processing, we look at our different superheroes over here. We see that we have the motherboard. The motherboard is the largest circuit board that we have in our system unit. All the other components basically plug into that. The CPU plugs into the motherboard. The RAM plugs into the motherboard. The ROM is built into the motherboard. Our hard drives plug into the motherboard as well. Then on the CPU side, we know the CPU does all of the processing. That speed is measured in gigahertz. We know we get things like dual core, quad core, I core. And this just tells us that even though there is a physical, it might just be one physical chip that's there, um, the duties that it has, and I'm going to just try and bring it across that way, the duties that that CPU has is now actually broken up so that it can be more efficient and more effective, and it can give the power to the particular process that it needs to, right? This is why you have your I core, which is your intelligent core. So it knows, listen, this person is just opening up files and folders, doesn't need that much processing power, I'm going to give a certain amount. But the minute it sees you doing something more, it can then give more 
um, processing power to that activity. Then we have RAM and ROM. And by now we know, I mean, we started this um, talking a little bit about ROM. So <clears throat> our ROM holds the programs that control the basic hardware of the computer. Here we have the instructions in ROM um, that are stored there permanently. So when you switch on your PC, the PC looks for the ROM, it looks for those instructions. And the first thing the ROM will do is go and check that all the hardware is working. It gives you a beep to tell you everything is A-OK. -okay. Now we can begin to look for the operating system and load it. Our RAM, something that comes up often, right? Random access memory, whereas ROM is our read-only memory. This is where the CPU obtains instructions and data that it needs to work on. Importantly, a program only runs when it's loaded into memory and can only work with data that is loaded into memory. Okay, so please be able to explain these things if you are asked um, to do so. All right, then just a little more info on that. We know it stands for random access memory. We know it's volatile. The capacity is measured in gigabytes, right? The speed is measured in megahertz or gigahertz, and there we can see a picture of that. And this is why I've done a series of videos looking at the physical hardware components so you can really get your head around that. And you can see that this fits into the motherboard, whereas the ROM is already on the motherboard. This is where you have permanent storage of information, mainly the, the instructions that's needed to boot up the PC. It is non-volatile. Right? And the data in these chips are either unchangeable or it requires a special operation to change. So you can, but yeah, there's a, there's a whole um, thing around that as to how to do that. We also have cache memory. So this is high speed RAM and this is placed between the CPU and the RAM. This can be accessed faster than RAM. And what is it used for? It's used to store program instructions and data. However, it's just got a very, very small capacity, which is usually measured in kilobytes or megabytes. Okay, so those are your three bits of memory, your, your cache memory, your RAM, and your ROM. So when the PC boots up, when you switch that computer on and you press that start button or you press that, that on button, we've got instructions from ROM. Right? It goes to look for those instructions. The CPU takes that. What does it do? Checks the hardware. From there, it looks to the um, hard drive to find out, well, where's the operating system? And once it finds it, it then loads. It. Okay? So again, we switch it on. We press that button. What then happens? That ROM over there checks all that hardware. Right? We get in those instructions, we see in R, keyboard, mouse, hard drive, motherboard, RAM, all those things. Because there are certain beep codes that will come up if something is not working. So once all that is checked, ticked off, it gives you the beep. The ROM then gives those instructions to the CPU. And it then goes to look to find the hard drive. And if you've got multiple hard drives, the one that has the operating system on it, it finds it. And then it loads that operating system. And then we get into Windows. All right, folks, and that brings me to the end of our module for Term 2.